Okay, so this is Derek Redmond standing outside our Split Laugh Redmond garage. And what I'm going to do now is take you through a bit of a walk and a process of what the rider and bike goes through just before they race. So obviously the bike's prepared in, uh, in our own individual garages. Once that's done, they have to be taken to scrutineering. And the route that they take towards scrutineering is this route that I'm going to take you on. So now we've got the TT, the, the senior race, which is only an hour and a half, two hours away. So the bike has already gone through scrutineering. The rider actually is in our second motorhome, fast asleep. Mark Miller's sitting in there, having a sleep, trying to get his head together, trying to keep away from all of the noise and the hustle and bustle of what's going on. We've already had one race this morning, the uh, lightweights. There's another race going on now, which I think is the sidecars. I'm not 100% sure. But now I'm going to take you on the route of where the bike goes. So the bike will come out of our garage, pushed by a couple of mechanics, slightly uphill. And the thing that they have to do, which is quite strange about it, is that you've got to negotiate all the fans that come around looking at the bikes, taking photographs, having a look at everything that's going on. So if we uh, dodge for all these people, Pass a big massive RI helmet, you know you're halfway there. The queue normally ends up somewhere down where that hedge is for screwing here, all the way up to this red building which we're going to up here. It takes about I don't know five or six minutes for each bike to be screwed here. So this queue can you can be in this queue for the best part of an hour. Alright. First stop is normally here. Somebody will pick up this uh, magic bit of equipment here, point it towards your uh, your timer, your transponder. It registers on a computer to make sure that you've got the right transponder and the right transponder is registered to the right bike. So that's step one. Once you pass that, you then come up here. Depending on what yeah. race is, you might have all four of these bikes open. Today, I think they've had two open. Now close it down to one because most of the teams and most of the bikes will be scrutinized for today's racing. So you push your bike up here. You've got these wonderful people in blue. Keeping your bike to bits, and if there's anything wrong with them, they will pick it up. If there's any nuts loose, any bolts, if the chain's too loose, if the handlebars aren't tight, all that sort of stuff, these guys will make sure that's all good. Flattery will get you everywhere. Flattery will get you everywhere. So just passed the scrutiny for 2014. <laughs> there's normally a couple of bikes in here, one this side, one that side. Scrutineer this side, scrutineer that side. Sometimes if it's really busy, they may have two bikes behind and a scrutineer on each bike behind as well. So they go for all your bikes. If there is a problem, follow me, and we'll end up over here. You park your bike up here, which is referred to as the sin bin. And if it's just a simple problem, all you do is you go and get whatever tools are, are required. It could be, a, I don't know, a loose nut on a, on a rear sprocket or something. You go and get the, uh, the tools that's required, and you do it here in front of one of the scrutineers. Once they're happy, you have a little card, they sign it off, and you're done. If it's a bit more of a major job, it still has to be done here. It has to be done in front of the scrutineers. Once that's all been done and your bike has been scrutineered, you come out of the scrutineer bay, your bike is now not allowed to go back down to your garage. So we have a temporary pit garage, which is where the bike now finds itself. And we'll walk down that way now. It's taking you over your job in a couple of years. Hello. You're going to ask for the pass. We're just doing a bit of filming for... Um, it's just his park firm, I swear. Oh, it's park firm. So and okay. we'll cut. It's actually quite a tough time for the riders because not only are you trying to get your heads together, you've also got to deal with photographers, cameras, people wanting to interview, all sorts going on. You've got to take that on board as well and you can't ignore them, you can't not do it. So it's quite a difficult time for riders. Here we've got Dave Johnson just turning up at his PR racing garage and next door to that is our split racing garage with both of our riders' names on there but obviously only one bike going out today which is uh, Mark Miller. So Mark. We'll move out of the way for a little bit. Mark will be possibly coming down in the next five or ten minutes. Mark's quite cool, quite laid back. He gets down here relatively late and he just comes down, sits down, does his final little thing, sorts out all the tear-offs on his visors, makes sure that he's got extra visors on his on his helmet. His uh, pit crew will be somewhere floating around. Pretty much now this bike will be completely ready. Tire warmers are on, it's full of fuel. There'll be three guys going out on the pits with him. One to do tires. 
guys one to do the fuel and the other guy will change the visor and also give Mark some some water there'll be six, six laps and there'll be two pit stops after each two laps after two laps they'll come into a pit stop back out for two laps back in again for another two laps final pit stop and then they're finished so this is quite an important time now save so about 40 minutes to go everyone is trying to get themselves mentally sorted well the riders are anyway and just prepare themselves in their own little way and it doesn't really matter what sport that you, you you do everybody prepares for their competition in their own little way some people like to be in the the hustle and the bustle of it others like to stay away for as long as they can and come out at the 11th hour so it's down to each individual rider to what they do but once they get out here and get to this point no turning back once you get called to go out onto the road and line up then there's no turning back you get that tap on your shoulder from that marshal and that's it you're away down Grey Hill you hit 180 mile an hour and you know this is it six laps of this so uh, we'll just wait for Mark to come out and if we're lucky maybe we'll get a couple of words with him okay so we're just talking about final prep uh, final preparations before you go out and race and on cue, our rider Mark Miller's just arrived. So Mark, can you just sort of tell me what's going through your mind with about half an hour before the start of the race? Not a whole lot, really. And I'll tell you why, once you get out there, you can't help but be uh, be in the moment. So all I have to do is throw the leg over and it'll come. Yeah? Okay, and so once you're out, you've had that tap on the shoulder, you're going down Bray Hill, are you thinking of it corner by corner, or are you thinking maybe a little bit further along the line? How do you actually approach each lap of, you know, during the lap? Yeah, I think you have to think a couple quarters ahead, but I'll certainly be just trying to get down into quarter bridge and get out and get, get the lap started so that I can shake off all the butterflies and then it'll just flow. Good. So it's pretty much the same with most balls. In my own personal experience, once the the gun goes in my case or in Mark's case the, the tap on the shoulder, you just think about what's going to be done as you're going along. And you're not actually thinking about anybody else or anything else, just concentrating on what's on. Well I'm not going to keep you for too long. I want to wish you the best of luck. Thank you mate. And here's to a good one. Awesome. Thanks a lot. Cheers.